Gowdy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Is the, is the uh, general solicitation ban constitutional, and can you cite me to specific published opinions that support your position? Congressman, I think um, that you raise a very um, good question with respect to the general solicitation ban, and the Chairman has raised that uh, as well in uh, some of his correspondence. And we, we absolutely recognize that the general solicitation ban does limit speech to some extent. And so it is one of the issues um, that we are doing, uh, we are looking at in our study, and, um, and, and a First Amendment analysis um, will be part of that. I think the issue for us is whether the general solicitation ban um, passes First Amendment muster, but in addition, um, whether its protection of investors is appropriately balanced with the need for companies to be able to effectively uh, communicate in order to raise capital. And so that is one of the issues we will be looking at closely. Well, given the fact that it implicates a fundamental right, you have the, the, the strictest uh, level of constitutional scrutiny, and it has to be as narrowly drawn as it possibly can be, if you conclude in your own independent analysis that it is not constitutional, will you do what there is some precedent in the executive branch for doing, which is not enforcing laws that you don't think um, are constitutional? Um, will you abandon the ban if you conclude that it doesn't pass constitutional muster? I believe, um, I obviously can't predict where we will come out on this issue, but we would, um, rather than not enforce the law that is on the books, we would seek to, to, to change it. There is some precedent for not enforcing the laws that are on the books. I think you would agree with me. There, there is precedent, but um, I, I have um, uh, I have have sworn to duty to uphold that. the law and the Constitution, and so I would be a bit uncomfortable with just ignoring a provision of the law. But that said, this is an area that we will, we will be looking at very carefully. With respect to um, 2008, um, do you know or can you tell me the number of defendants who received active prison sentences, not fines, not promises not to do it again, but active prison sentences? Um, I really can't speak. We don't have criminal authority and we don't prosecute um, cases in the, crim in the uh, criminal justice system. I can tell you that for the Securities and Exchange Commission in 2008, we brought more than 670 cases uh, with disgorgement of ill-gotten gains and penalties that were ordered of over a billion dollars and a billion dollars returned to investors who had been harmed by securities fraud. And those are, are very big, laudable numbers. Of those cases, how many did you refer for criminal prosecution to a respective United States Attorney's Office? Um, I would guess a, a healthy number, um, but I, and I would be happy to provide that exact number to you. Um, I would record. be interested, because I am asked quite often in South Carolina why nobody goes to jail. Uh, if you are rich and all you do is steal money, you don't go to jail. Um, so I, I, I am very interested, and I am also interested in whether or not the SEC would have appeared and ask for an enhanced sentence or an upward departure, um, given the, uh, uh, the erosion of public trust uh, that was manifest in 2008. Congressman, I think if you look at the sanctions that the SEC has leveled over the past several years for um, violations, again, civil violations of the Federal securities laws, you will see that they have ramped up rather significantly. I gave you the numbers for 2008, but in 2010, our disgorgement of ill-gotten gains and penalties reached $2.85 billion, and we returned $2 billion uh, to uh, harmed investors, $2.2 billion. I am not giving short shrift to your disgorgement. Uh, that is wonderful. Um, but you can criminally prosecute and disgorge someone of their ill-gotten gains at the same time. And uh, nothing gets people's attention quite like an act of prison sentence. There is no question about that. And we make many referrals to the Justice Department. And we bring many cases jointly with uh, local U.S. attorneys and district attorneys around the country um, and try to interest them in bringing uh, more securities fraud cases whenever we can. Uh, Ma'am, would you be gracious enough to, to get me um, Obviously, I don't want pending investigations, but cases that are that are concluded that were referred to various U.S. attorneys' offices Absolutely. and what the outcome was. Be happy to. And with that, Mr. Chairman.